This week in the boathouse, the crew moves ahead on the deck. After sorting the pine decking, work turns to the covering boards and their hide butt scarves. Have fun with that one in the comments. Stay tuned to the end of the episode to see Steve help Robin make her second attempt at the 49 mile hut traverse in 24 hours or less. I am super relieved to see the covering boards cut to their rough shape. Um, figuring out if we had the sweeps or what was literally been keeping me up at night. Um, but I poked away at it some more this weekend after we finished steaming. And I had some help from my girlfriend Robin and her daughter Lucy. So they helped me move some of these longer ones around and get them through the thickness planer and get those cut to shape. And then Aaron came by and he gave me a hand getting all of the decking sorted. So I went through and cut it at all of the knots and any major defects, got any blue streak, anything like that out of there. And then uh, Aaron and I took them all outside and arranged them by length. So the next step is to go through the decking here and we've got a batten sprung in and we are going to start figuring out how much decking we need and what the lengths need to be so that we can figure out exactly what we need to scarf up and how best to use the materials that we have. Uh, the decking runs we have aren't terribly long uh, so we got to really make sure that we use them judiciously. Well, should we line off a deck? Let us. Uh, you want to call numbers and I'll draw? Yep. And I think if we start by just making the big rectangle that is the house, then we can start, start pulling there. measurements off that. How long is the house? 13.3. From grub to grub is six feet one half inch. All right. And then four hatch to Samson post. Just shy of three feet. The aft end is two feet eight inches. This is, um, not meant to be accurate enough for us to pull measurements off of, but close enough to scale that as we're looking at things, they make sense. Nice. Cool. So there's our, our very rough shaped boat. Excellent. That's section A. Okay. And then what is our dimension for that area Four fore and aft? aft? And then what okay. are, is that dimension port and starboard? Yeah. And then that'll let us know what our length is and how many strakes we need. And we'll yeah. just go through and break the whole boat into different sections. Cool. All right, and then section D, let's do from the hatch to the house. Our longest will be 10 feet, six inches. So section E will be <clears throat> everything from the house out Outboard. to the to the covering board. Yeah. Should we actually just go start grabbing, grabbing the strings and laying, laying them out. all out? We can go grab anything that's a bunch that's of two footers over twenty two and under twenty eight, and lay that out for the bridge deck. Yep. And then we can go get anything that's like 
three foot six to four foot and see if we have enough for up forward. Mm -hmm. We laid out all the stock on the deck. We started with the short lengths for the bridge deck and fore and aft of the hatches uh, and used the stuff. We were trying to do full lengths as much as we can. And then we worked up towards the bigger stock. So we have enough full length stock to do everything inboard of the house, fore and aft. And we do not have enough stock, period, to cover the side decks, um, never mind long enough stock. So solution to that, it's down to the wood yard again and we rustled up another load of pine it's not as good as the original stuff that came up but there's definitely like a strake or two per board and if you add up how many boards we have to dig through it adds up to a good amount of strakes so we brought that up to the house fired up the big thickness planer worked the youngsters real hard got all of that ran through uh, and milled up and now we need to figure out how many we need to glue up and what we can do in full lengths because we don't want to scarf up more stock than we have to, but we want to make sure that we have enough stock scarfed up and painted and ready to go that when we go to lay the deck, we're not waiting for three days for the paint to dry and things to be done because we were shy of strike. So without further ado, let's get the side of the boat here lined off and see what these strakes look like. And we got a bunch of numbers here, and these are the planks. So they're two inch wide planks, so every two inches. So plank one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Up here, we're not gonna need plank 13. We're probably not even gonna need plank 12. Plank 11 will get nibbed into the covering board, or into the nib plank next to the covering board. Uh, but these are going to help us line up at midship where we are going to need the width of those planks. And, uh, let's go over here to midship. This is our widest point on the boat. So here we have deck planks 11, 12, 13, 14. And we won't need 15 because that'll be taken up by the covering board. But we'll definitely need out to 13 here. So I've got these marked at the fore, aft, and midships on the house. And now we're going to use the fest tool track to extend the house sides fore and aft out to the shear and then extend these out to the shear. And then we'll be able to see exactly where these planks land on the shear and figure out how long these deck strakes need to be. So this is going to be the first strake plank that goes onto the deck. And we're going to line it up tight against the house, fore and aft. We're going to do that both sides of the house. And then that'll essentially break the deck up into four quadrants. And we can have people working in different sections, not tripping all over each other. Uh, but we got to make sure that this run that goes parallel to the house, that we get this in nice and straight. Otherwise, we're going to end up with all sorts of issues. All right, and then KP, I'm going to need your assistance. So maybe we'll throw that thing in the tripod and we can go down and I'll watch our marks here. You can watch them at midship and then we can mark out as we come down. 
These measurements were passed over to the crew that set up outside, scarfing and sanding and painting the deck strakes. Next week you'll get a better look at what's been done out there. But inside, KP and an all-new hand got to work on everything else that's left to do for the covering boards. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam. I am a, an apprentice shipwright from Maine. Well, that should fit if I didn't put it upside down. <laughs> I live on my little plastic sailboat and recently have been sailing from boatyard to boatyard working on whatever projects may be there. Most recently was on the AJ Meerwald restoration project in Belfast. So my responsibility was to mill up stock roughly, hand it over to the shipwright, they'd fit it, help them with everything else. Lots of painting, lots of planing, lots of moving and loading lumber. Meerwald was 85 feet, something to that um, length. So everything was much bigger, uh, much harder to handle, and uh, rougher, you could say, since it was a work boat. Um, not even close to yacht quality, as you would imagine. Um, so the focus on Meerwald, because it was a timed budget situation, was efficiency and what's the, what's the quickest, easiest way we could do this without um, sacrificing quality. And uh, Tim and Garrett, Clark and Isley boat building, were really good at transferring that knowledge over to me. So here, where we have um, lots of little projects to do, it helps to be as efficient as possible so we can get it done for lunch at some point. <laughs> okay. So we're trying to get five inch covering boards which means this covering board needs to go forward a whole bunch, a whole bunch, a few inches to get five inches where it meets the king plank. If we have the king plank, just a straight six inch plank. So I guess the question is, do we move this plank, this covering board forward to get the width or do we leave it where it is save the length lose the width and then have to make this the king plank a little bit wider than six inches that's my question for you master steve my answer for you captain kp is i want to make the king plank up here wider than six anyways because the bowsprit is supposed to be five inches in diameter and we might want to make it six inches wide because we're going to put the bow rollers on it for the anchors oh, and spreading right. those another inch or two apart might make a significant difference. And I really don't want to have a caulking seam hidden underneath the bowsprit. No, no So I'm not. willing to bet that the king plank up here is going to be more like eight and it would be really great if it encompasses the base of that Samson post, which is four inches. So an eight inch wide king plank going around that would give us okay. some actual meat on either side. So then I'll leave the covering board here and not fret. No, I think we can make that up with the king plank. Because no it's problem. five inches there. Thanks, Bass. All right, good. So our line lines up. And we're good there. Hi, Joe. Hi. How are we doing? Ready to put it together. All right. Yes. Want somebody big enough to lift that up and just hold it out there. Ooh. All right. Who wants to uh, grab a big electric motor and try to hover it in the air? Yeah, I'll come give you a hand. I can. I, can. <laughs> I got it. Okay. Because that's over 7 sixteenths mm -hmm. overhang. 
we've put in where the covering boards are going with a little overhang so that this bevel can match this angle of the hull. You want to show them your bevel stick? Yeah, so I went around and uh, created a little uh, declination board or what have you. These are all the angles for where the hull meets the covering board uh, for the port side. And I went around to station one at the bow, station five at the Samson post, and so forth, all the way to the stern. So at around station 19, which is about midship, it's essentially a right angle. So there's no modification that we need to make, essentially. This line is an inch and a half off of this line. So when I draw, when I project that out, it's projecting the same amount that the cover board is thick wise. <laughs> and then based off of that, we can measure and project out the width of the covering board um, so that it's all the same and it looks beautiful from on deck and um, looks right. Okay, so we have a quarter of an inch up forward here at one. Okay. Yep, we're at quarter. There. Great. That's better. We've placed the covering boards where we want them. And now we have to cut scarves to join them all together. So we have laid out some fancy cardboard, the width and curve and the length that we'll need to make six hide butts So we'll scarf this in. We'll scarf wherever the line is, 18 inches down, and then we'll put this board in as the butt. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Woo. Yeah. 5.30. I think I'm going to call it. Calling it. Well, you were here earlier than me. I don't blame you. Come back next week to see these scarfs cut and glued, as well as the progress that's been made in the background here on the deck planks. And Steve's not in the boathouse because he was helping Robin attempt the grueling hut traverse up in the White Mountains. If you've been following closely, you might remember her giving this a shot last October. Missing it by just one hut made her all the more determined to come back and complete all 49 miles and 16,000 feet of elevation gain.
headed north for round two. How are you feeling? Uh, I feel good. I feel like I train really hard. I'm nervous. I know I have a long day ahead of me tomorrow. I mean, a long day is a little bit of an understatement. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> Morning of. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. It's beautiful out. Um, it still hasn't, it hasn't totally hit me yet. I don't think it's going to hit me until I actually start like gearing up and like lacing up my shoes. So last year you went from 1am to 1am, so you left here in the dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's obviously daylight out. Yep. Change of plans this year. I learned a lot last year. And definitely, um, there were sections of the trail that I did at night last year that were really hard to navigate and um, I lost a lot of time trying to either like find the trail in the dark or or view the trail just especially in the ridge line in the fog and not being able to see um, from like one trail marker to the next so this year I want to avoid all that I want to start in the daylight do the prezzies while it's light out save all that navigation hassle and then hit Crawford Notch just as the sun is setting and kind of quest into the easier part in the middle of the hike overnight. And then the hardest part comes at the end as <laughs> you may or may not remember from last year. No, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel ready. I, I don't have anything else to say. I, the hay is in the barn. I've done all the training. I've done the hard work and I had a hard 24 hours ahead of me. I just have to like keep taking one step at a time until I Make it to Lonesome Lake, because I ain't stopping until I get there. I love, love you. you. See, I'll see you at Crawford. Mm, I'll see you at Crawford, my love. And I'll All see right. you at Gilhead. Yep. All right, here we go. I'm off. 24 hours starts right now. Robin is out of here. So I've got my pack here with her pack inside it and all of our camping stuff. And I'm gonna hike down to the trailhead, jump in the truck, and head over to Franconia and meet up with Andrew. Yeah, we're car spotting his car in Franconia. And we should see Robin in Crawford sometime this evening. rolling into Madison Springs. I am an hour, two, almost two hours ahead of schedule and about three hours faster than my last year's time. Um, yeah, gonna keep rolling. Okay, we're making our way. Where's Eva? Hi, Eva! We're killing it. Beautiful day. Sun is setting and Robin just left Mitzpah. So I've got her burrito and coffee here started. She should be down here pretty soon. And then it's on to the more or less the second half, which is the longer and harder half, and it's gonna be dark soon. Here I am. Hey hey! Wait, I have a That's good! No way! Oh. Burrito's ready, coffee's no. ready. I love this! Woo. So Robin came into Crawford feeling real strong just at sunset. Her and Andrew took off for the next leg. I drove Eva up to Appalachia where she left her car by Madison, drove down to Gale River. So now I've got just over two miles ahead of me up to Gale Head Hut and uh, Robin and Andrew should be coming through sometime between two and four in the morning. It's uh, about 10.30 now. So I'm gonna get up there and sleep for a couple hours and they're gonna wake me up and Andrew's gonna come down and grab the truck and I'm gonna head across the ridge with Robin. All right, me and Andrew rolling into Zealand. It's 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Well, 10 minutes faster than I thought we'd take, but we're significantly ahead of schedule because we're mm. awesome. Well, it's a little after midnight and I'm uh, right near Galehead Hut. 
Robin should be coming through I don't know, in the next two to five hours, hopefully the next three hours, depending on how they're moving. So got my sleeping bag and my pad here. I'm just going to sack out in the middle of the trail for a couple hours until they come along and wake me. They can tag the hut, I'll pack my gear, and uh, we'll continue on. When we meet up, Andrew's going to take my sleeping bag and my pad for me and head on down to the car, and I'm going to continue with my day pack with Robin uh, across the ridge and hopefully catch sunrise, I don't know, sometime up on Garfield. We will see, but I'm going to catch a couple hours sleep here because that's all I'm going to get tonight. <laughs> Made it to Galhead, 2 a.m., two hours ahead of schedule. Rock and roll. Killing it, babe. Killing it. Yeah, feeling good. I'm like both happy that I only slept for like an hour and a half. Yeah. And sad that I only slept for like an hour and a half. Yeah, I was saying that to Andrew. I was like, I hope that we're not so fast, but like Steve doesn't get any sleep. No, it was just enough that it made it worth coming up with my sleeping bag and pad. Good. Holy moly. Yeah, I remember this feature from last yeah. season. <laughs> Four thirty in the morning. We're over Garfield. I think we're starting to head up Lafayette, unless this uphill's a big tease. But going up Lafayette soon. There's Garfield in the background. We were just up there a few minutes ago. Woo. Mm. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out the uphill was just a tease. We've got a little more down here, but not too bad. There's Lafayette in the distance, so just gotta go up and over that nice little hill. Shouldn't take us too, too long, a couple more hours. How you feeling? Just rolled into Greenleaf Hut. It is 6.36. We are 25 minutes ahead of schedule. Well, per what I thought the estimate would be to get here. We're actually two and a half hours ahead of schedule, which is amazing. We have four and a half hours to make it to Lonesome Lake, which is four and a half miles away. So, uh, I mean, anything can happen, but it's looking good. Luckily, Ben edits a lot of stuff out. So when we talk, we pause, like mm -hmm. put a lot of pauses into talking. Mm -hmm. Should I wait for the airplane to go by? Place the covering boards where we want them. And now we have to cut scarves. 